Proposed laws that would restrict reproductive rights, cuts to early education, refusal to accept funds to expand Medicaid access, and bill after bill after bill designed to create undemocratic obstacles to the right to vote. What is going on in North Carolina and why? Let's get right to it. Joining me by remote from Washington, D.C. is Barbara Arnwine from the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under the Law. And from Raleigh, North Carolina, William Chafe, who's Duke University professor of history and who was arrested Monday during a protest against the Republican-led legislative agenda. Professor Chafe, I would like to start with you. Um, tell me, why did you decide to take part in the, in the protests? Well, because it was important that people who are mainstream people of the state stand up and stand up for justice. Uh, the legislature is really trying to eradicate North Carolina's progressive history. And as someone who has written about that history and been part of that history, we wanted to make sure that the people knew that the legislature was really intent on destroying who we had become over the last 50 years. And look, this is really important. You know, I, maybe I should reveal you were my history professor uh, in, in graduate school. What I know about North Carolina history in so many ways, I learned um, in your courses, reading your texts. And you're saying that there's a, there's a progressive history here. I think sometimes folks who aren't from the South don't really get the North Carolina story. Tell us a little bit about it. We well, you know, North Carolina history, if we go back 50 years, that, this is where the sit-in started in 1960, uh, when four young first-year students in North Carolina a and decided to demonstrate that they deserved to be served at a lunch counter after they bought products at other counters. That four went to 23 the next day, to 66 the next day, to 100, to 1,000 within five days. And within nine weeks, it extended to 54 cities in nine different states. That inaugurated a period of time, and it started in North Carolina, when the direct action civil rights movement came alive. After that, the state really became a very different kind of place, led by those kinds of demonstrations. Terry Sanford was the governor, uh, elected in 1960. He actually was one of the few white people who set a model for the rest of the state by sending his children to desegregated schools. Mm -hmm. He made public education a primary concern. Mm -hmm. He started a war on poverty in North Carolina before the war on poverty started in the country. And Terry Sanford said, a model for how to be a progressive state that could use its laws and its commitment to fairness to attract new businesses. So North Carolina has become one of the most fast-growing uh, and progressive states in the country based upon that foundation. And that's a foundation that's been followed by Republican governors like Jim Holzhauser, as well as Democratic governors like Jim Hunt. And now this legislature is sort of throwing it all out, mm -hmm. and it's terrible. It's going to destroy our state. So, Barbara, let me bring you in here because um, uh, Professor Chafe has sort of, you know, laid this groundwork that North Carolina was a place where these kinds of sort of, you know, mobilizations of the people, and that is definitely what you've been up to. How can people in the face of this kind of disenfranchisement get their voices heard? Well, I think it's so important for people to know that the voter ID bill that was introduced in North Carolina was introduced on April 4th, the anniversary mm. of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. How nefarious can you be? It also is important to know that we who believe in democracy and want open democracy and want to make sure everybody have their voting rights accorded to them, that we have to use the same tactics that Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King used in his strategies of sit-ins, pray-ins, but also we can use our modern tools of the internet, of our ability to mobilize in new and great ways. I am so glad to hear about these Moral Mondays. I want to see more of this. Right now, North Carolina is ground zero mm -hmm. in this fight for voter against voter suppression, but it is critical that we fight in the other eight states yep. where we have these uh, uh, critical fights going on right now around attempts to suppress the right to vote. Now, Barbara, when you say that it's ground zero, I actually thought you were going somewhere slightly different, which is just how important is North Carolina in, in 2014 and in 2016? Well, the whole fight is over in North Carolina. I mean, the whole this is this battle right now mm -hmm. in 2013 is over 2014. We should be very clear that already this year, since January, 58 to 60 
voter suppression bills have been introduced in the various state legislatures. People are thinking really hard about 2014 and how to make sure that people cannot vote. And we're, on the other hand, those of us who believe in democracy, we're fighting to make sure that people can vote and to expand the right to vote. So there's a fight, a contest of wheels, counter visions, different perspectives, but we are fighting every day. And I want to make sure that people are engaged in this fight, that you're, you know, that you are making sure that this is your moment, because this is the fight of our lifetimes. Mm -hmm. Professor Jay, I, I have just a few moments left, but I, I do want to give you sort of a final opportunity. What do you see as the most sort of insidious current um, legislative actions? What are the things that really seem to undermine this progressive history? Well, they're taking away women's right to control their own bodies. They're trying to outlaw abortion. But above all, they're trying to destroy the capacity of people to register their opinions at the polls. North Carolina had 85% of African Americans in, in my county registered to vote, and they all came out to vote, and they helped elect Barack Obama in 2008 and almost in 2012. It's also important to recognize that 50% of the votes for the, Demo for the legislature this year were Democratic votes. But because of gerrymandering, two-thirds of the seats that were up went to Republicans. Yep. So 50-50 becomes two-thirds, and that is not only unfair, it is un-American and it's undemocratic. Professor Chave, I, I have always learned so much from you. I continue to be inspired by your work. Thank you so much. And Barbara, Thank I, you. I, you know, I'm always stealing something from you, and I'm going to steal from you this, this phrase, we who believe in democracy. I think that that's a critically important way for us to define ourselves, not, not Democrats, not Republicans, but we who believe in democracy. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you to Professor William Chafe in Raleigh, North Carolina, and to Barbara Arnwine in Washington, D.C. Up next, the simple imagery that could shake up the gun control debate in the Senate. The people behind it are my foot soldiers of the week.